What are the five best ETFs for beginner investors, especially if you want to invest passively? In this video, I will not only tell you what the five best ETFs might be for long-term passive investing if you are a beginner, but also five tips on how to deal with investing in ETFs, especially if you are a beginner. First, let me quickly say something about myself to provide context. I have been investing for over 10 years, almost 11 actually, and through our website Happy Investors, we help beginner investors achieve financial freedom. The goal is to achieve returns, but also to limit risks. I started with stocks back then. Why? I have a background, both academically and at the University of Applied Sciences in business administration. I have a passion for entrepreneurship and I actually read books almost daily, as well as a lot of analyses of companies. And yet, when it comes down to it, it is very difficult to beat the market and achieve consistently high returns. And that leads me to the first tip, which is market efficiency. As a beginner investor, you need to be aware that the market is predominantly efficient most of the time. This means that the future prices and the current information are reflected in the future price of the stock. And that means it is actually difficult to find really good bargains. If you are an advanced investor, many years later, you will learn that it is easier than you think. But there are many complex pros and cons, and as a beginner, you don't want that. You simply want to start investing in ETFs, where you also limit the risk because you have a lot of diversification. I assume I don't need to explain what an ETF is. For that, check out other videos on our channel. Happy Investors knows as well. I do this purely for fun. The YouTube channel hardly makes any money. I do occasionally promote my business, which is a win. However, I do it more to help and share knowledge. What if I had received that information so many years ago and had also listened? For me, the latter is difficult. I am a doer. I like to do things myself. But what if then you would have made a better start? So know that time is money. I make this video quickly. I do no editing. I hardly do any preparation. This is just all the knowledge I have, which I share with you. And the story is not always consistent. There may be mistakes in it. It doesn't matter. It's about the essence of helping you. Number one is, when you start investing, take market efficiency into account. You might think you can beat the market, but in practice, that is particularly difficult. You need the background, you need the passion for investing and for entrepreneurship, and above all, you need a lot of patience. Patience is also one of the most important tasks you have as a beginner investor. Number two is time is money. If you choose to invest passively and simply invest in ETFs, then the only thing you need to do is select a few ETFs, maybe even one, which can also be sufficient depending on what you want. And you invest an amount in those ETFs every month or every quarter, and that's it. Very passive, you spend five minutes a month on it, and that's it. It doesn't cost you any more time, and this is very important. Why? If you, like me, start analyzing companies daily or weekly, reading annual reports, and studying quarterly figures, Screenings, I call it whatever, just name it all. That takes a lot of time. If you don't want to invest that time, you can't beat the market anyway. Period. If you do invest that time, it will simply cost you money. Why? The same time you invest in that is opportunity cost for other things you could develop. Building your own side hustle, expanding your own business, working more, over time, or of course, much more importantly, spending time and joy with your family. It doesn't cost money but it brings a lot of joy to life. And that is, of course, the goal of investing. So time is money. Very important in ETF investing is that it takes very little time. Passive investing. That is a big advantage you have as a beginner investor. So don't be very stubborn. Just start with ETFs. Simple. And that simplicity, that is number three, is actually a very important tip. Keep it as simple as possible. You can invest in 10 different ETFs, but that adds complexity. Just keep it as simple as possible. Why? First of all, it's easier. Secondly, it costs you and saves you brain power. If you have to think a lot about investing, again, that comes at the expense of other things. You think about one thing and you can't think about the other. So opportunity costs are very important and it's also a good reason to just start slowly with ETF investing. Even if it's just to keep it simple and spread your risk. Well, we've already talked about market efficiency, so it's difficult to beat the market. That's a reason to start with ETFs. We've talked about time is money, passive investing. Passive investing is easier with ETFs because if you do it in stocks, it's almost impossible. Then you run a lot of risks. And another advantage of investing in ETFs is to keep it as simple as possible. Now a fourth advantage to choose and start investing in ETFs is costs, transaction costs. 
If you have a simple ETF portfolio of one or two or three ETFs, I'm just saying. Then it actually costs you every month or quarter, depending on what you do. Only your transaction costs, your purchase costs. Moreover, ETFs are relatively cheap, especially compared to mutual funds. But because you only buy each time and sell very little, you save on transaction costs in the long run. If you have a lot of money, it adds up in expenses. If you have less money, it's somewhat less relevant. However, costs are costs, and the lower your costs, the better. If you're going to start investing in stocks, and you don't know what you're doing, which I also experienced, then you will buy and sell more, resulting in more transactions and higher costs. Again, investing in ETFs is simpler, and you save costs just by keeping it simple and thus reducing transaction costs. And number five is the aspect of emotions. And this is actually the most important. At Happy Investors, we have courses for beginners, super basic, explained in a very simple and accessible way. By the way, for just a few tens of euros, because we stand for simple investing, for financial freedom, and we also believe you should keep costs as low as possible, so no expensive courses. However, the main thread for all beginner investors is learning to deal with emotions. I experienced that myself in the beginning as well. First of all, you just have a lot of market noise. Trump. I don't know. Russia. Then something happens with interest rates. Then there's something in the real estate market. A lot is happening. A lot of noise. Really? 30% is nonsense. 20% has a kernel of truth, and only 1% is worth delving into that is relevant for your portfolio. With ETFs, you just have to learn to deal with all of that. And that mainly means ignoring, ignore the noise, hold on, just stick to a structured plan of action. Another point regarding emotions is learning to deal with volatility. Prices fluctuate with ups and downs. Also ETFs where you have diversification in multiple stocks, that can be 25, it can also be 10,000. So we all go through ups and downs, and you can actually benefit from that as a beginner investor. Only at the beginning is that very difficult, because first of all, the beginning is hard. It's difficult to achieve returns at the start, positive returns. And secondly, once you are that far along, for example, you're at plus 5%, and then the market drops by 10%, and then you suddenly start to worry, like, hey shit, I'm in the red now, what should I do? And some people panic and sell at a loss, and then never start investing again. Yes. That is really the biggest mistake you can make. How do you achieve returns with investing? Very simple. Hold for the long term. And with ETFs, it's just simple because you have a lot of diversification. As seen here, you can't really achieve more diversification. And then you just need to hold on. That sounds very simple. From practice, I also know in guiding a lot of people, almost thousands of people even, everyone struggles with it at the beginning. Don't give up. Learn to deal with it. A final piece about emotions is also knowing what you are doing. When you start with stocks, you often don't know what you are doing. This increases doubt and uncertainty, making you more likely to sell. If you later become an advanced investor and you understand very well the company you are investing in, then you have almost no worries. And if it goes up and down, well, who cares? Hold on, you know what you are doing. Knowing what you are doing helps. Ignore market noise. As a beginner investor, you don't have that. So to summarize briefly, five tips for motivation on why to start with ETFs and not, for example, stocks or cryptocurrencies. Where many people also have no clue what they are doing, but that aside, just start with ETFs. The goal is to achieve returns at an acceptable risk. That is the first goal. It is very difficult to beat the market, so market efficiency plays a role. Time is money. Investing with ETFs, a simple way, saves you time. By keeping it simple, you also save computational power and brain power, which again gives you opportunity costs to spend both time and energy on other things. For example, more career, building a business, or for example, more time and enjoyment with your family. The fourth is to keep costs lower with ETF investing by keeping it simple again. And the fifth is to start because you need to learn to deal with emotions. A large part of investing is psychology market psychology as well. Your own mindset, your own emotions, crucial in investing. And we see it with everyone we guide. Those who are successful are the ones who are willing to invest for the long term. And also, not to give too much weight to everything that happens on a daily basis. So much like success in life, it starts here and begins with yourself. A brief introduction to a few tips that I would like to share with you. Do with it what you want. We are now going to look at five ETFs that 
in my opinion, are very good for beginner investors in a passive way with a lot of risk diversification. These are not the absolute best ETFs to achieve the highest possible return. That is not the goal of this video. The goal of this video is five of the potentially best ETFs that help you as a beginner investor with lower risk. That is the goal. Enjoy. Go to our website businessinvestors.info. You can find our own track record of money invested and our performance. And then go to free investing tools where you can download a lot of free investing tools. For example, stock portfolio tools, stock calculators for intrinsic valuation, also free investing ebooks, ETF investing guide, stock investing guide, and more coming soon. The Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, VT, is a top long-term ETF for passive investors seeking low risk. And in this analysis, I will explain to you why that is. When investing in ETFs, depending on your strategy, passive or active, lower or higher risk, there are many different choices to make. You just simply need to know that the market is at its most efficient. In most cases, the market is accurate regarding prices. It means that actually all stocks are generally relatively well valued or fairly valued. You only achieve high and average returns if you are able to find individual stock companies which are actually undervalued, allowing you to buy a company worth 1 million for, for example, 180,000, 800,000, and you already have the return in your pocket. But that is advanced investing. We are talking about ETFs that are interesting for the long term. And if you are a beginner passive investor with lower risk, then Vanguard's multi-stock ETF is very interesting. One of the crucial factors here is that the expense ratio is very low. Exchange traded funds charge costs annually, and the lower the expense ratio, the lower these annual costs, the higher your net return and Vanguard. Because they are a pioneer in ETFs, they were one of the first. Therefore, they have relatively large funds and Vanguard Total World is one of the largest funds. That is why it is rightly popular. As a result, they can maintain a very low expense ratio of 0.07%. I don't think you can find them cheaper than 0.07% per year. This is crucial because you simply follow the entire ETF, and that is the summary of the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. There are so many different stocks in this that you essentially follow the global average in the market, considering the variety of options available. The number of stocks in this fund is almost 10,000, and in the past it was even more than that. Now, almost 10,000 stocks. Know that if you want to have risk diversification in your portfolio, statistically, mathematically, you should want to have about 20 to 25 stocks in your portfolio spread across different sectors. Well, this doesn't have 20 in it, but almost 10,000. So statistically, yes, you really can't spread risks any further. That is also pointless. Actually, from 100 onwards, it doesn't have much use anymore. Only the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF is the market average. And you follow the market average in a very inexpensive way. Well, various ratios are listed here. And if you are a beginner investor who just wants to invest passively, the tip for the long term is to simply buy a monthly amount every month. If the price drops significantly at some point, and we will talk about that later, just buy a lot more. If you are an advanced investor, you definitely want to learn what the PE ratio of 21 means, which is relatively on the high side, but that is for advanced investors. The price to book ratio is also relatively high, and you need to know what the return on equity is, of course, for long term growth. But, Check our website for various courses that we offer at a relatively low price. I dare say actually cheap. For a few tens, you get a complete full-fledged course. That is what our brand stands for. We stand for simple investing with confidence and genuinely help you achieve high returns, but at a low realistic price. Because investing should simply be as cheap as possible so that your net return is as high as possible. It's really that simple. The Vanguard Total World Stock is a cheap fund. Expensive funds from Robico, Rabobank, or hedge fund managers may charge over 2% annually, significantly higher than the Vanguard through the multi-stock. And the result is that they do not achieve a high enough average return. At least about 80% or even more than that, 90% of all funds do not achieve a high enough average return in the long term. It also shows how difficult it is and how good investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are who together have achieved very impressive results. 
Now, this Vanguard Total World stock has 10,000 stocks, and those 10,000 stocks are spread across different markets. A part in Europe, a part in emerging markets, and a large part is in North America. Well, there is such a thing as an ETF portfolio where you buy multiple ETFs. What you can also do is buy an ETF focused on America, such as the Osh S&P 500, and complement it with, for example, an ETF focused on emerging markets to play more, and then you also gain more control over your positions. But again, these are all advanced strategies. Actually quite simple if you know how it works, but you need to delve into it a bit. One of the important things about an ETF, if you are really a beginner investor, is that you want to know what the holdings are, and often the top 10 holdings have a certain weighting. In this case, you see the top 10 holdings, and you see here that Apple has the largest position in this case. In a riskier ETF, which we will also discuss in this video, you see that the percentage of shares of each holding in the top 10 is relatively high. Sometimes that can amount to 60 to 70%. That means that 70% of the entire fund is invested in just 10 stocks. So that creates a skewed ratio and that top 10 can greatly determine the returns. This also explains why some ETFs achieve much higher returns over the long term. The Vanguard Total World stock doesn't actually do that. It has a bit more positions in the larger companies, Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet. However, after that, it quickly becomes less. They have further diversification over 10,000 stocks. So the effect of an Apple, Microsoft, or Amazon is relatively modest in the total weighting, but they do play a role, of course, and it is also these large companies that are responsible for the recent strong increase of this ETF, the Vanguard Total World Stock, and it is also these companies that have relatively higher valuations, which contribute to a part of this relatively higher valuation of the price to earnings ratio. A few things you should know. What we do, and for which we provide analyses with weekly updates for just 99 euros per year, is offer an overview of buy and sell signals for ETFs. They look like this, sell and buy signals. What we also do is a monthly update of top ETFs, including an overview based on the quant rating from Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is a great program that I have been using myself as an investor for many years. With over 10 years of experience in investing, I know what we are doing. And the quant rating actually indicates what the rating of the ETF is compared to all the ETFs within the calculation model. And there are very many of them. At the moment, the rating is a hold and we actually find the better ETFs in the shorter term by also looking at the quant rating, but also by the valuation. So a lower valuation with strong upward potential and momentum is often more attractive. But the Vanguard Total Wealth stock is actually just a kind of average, and it often has a hold rating or a buy rating, and not really that often a strong buy, which we are looking for. But a buy rating also simply means good, and at the moment the rating is a hold. I think it also has to do with a somewhat higher valuation at the moment. However, there are a number of interesting statistics about Vanguard Total World stock. For example, the momentum. The momentum is actually still surprisingly good. For instance, if we look at all the ETFs, there you have the median, which is not the average, but the median. And if you look at the Vanguard Total World stock, it had an annual return of 68% over five years. And that 68% return is almost double what the median of ETFs has priced. So there are many exchange traded funds, many mutual funds that have realized a significantly lower return than this lower risk. That is a very important part of the economy. 10,000 stocks are included, 60% of America, and that percentage is spread across the world. So you have a very low risk or at least a low, relatively low risk, and you also had a higher return. So that is very interesting about the Vanguard Total World stock. And you also have a higher return. And if you are an international investor, there are plenty of variants to be found, such as Vanguard's, which is also called Total World stock, but with the ticker WWRL. You also have the ticker IWDA. And you have various global ETFs, as I call them, or ETFs that have global diversification. But what is interesting about Vanguard and Woodstock is simply that low expense ratio of 0.07%. You also see that the average or median cost of all ETFs is around 0.5%. There are actually only a few ETFs that have around 0.2%. And then you have Vanguard, which often has the cheaper ETFs that are below 0.01%. 
So 0 0.07 cost is really very low. That's why you also get it at A+, because it is relatively much cheaper than many ETFs. And those costs are super important for the long term. Don't forget, the lower the costs, the higher your net return. Regarding dividends. Vanguard Total World Stock does pay out some dividends. However, we are not talking about dividend ETFs here. That is a more specialized theme fund, and there are very good dividend ETFs. Available that achieve both high dividends and high returns? Higher than the Vanguard Total World Stock. But we will discuss that later. Now, the risk is low for the Vanguard Total Wholesale Stock. For example, the standard deviation is also relatively lower than other ETFs at around 11. This basically means that you have relatively low volatility compared to the overall market. And it has to be that way because there are so many holdings in this fund that it is simply an average of the entire stock market. And now, volatility is therefore also relatively low and the turnover is only 4%, which means that only 4% of all stocks are exchanged each year. So there are stocks that are removed from the market because they are acquired by private equity or for some other reason, or stocks that simply go bankrupt, and those are then removed from the fund and replaced by new stocks. That is one of the reasons why I make these videos. One of the best ETFs. This one is just very liquid. That means you can sell your money at any random moment. You can sell your positions in the world stock. Maybe if you have millions of shares, if you have millions of shares. You can buy your money, you can buy your positions. Or if you have millions of euros in shares of VTW, then that liquidity is a problem. You can see here that the average daily volume is above 1 million. So that is very much... The total fund currently has more than 50 billion under management. That also explains the low costs. So the VTW is simply one of the better funds for long-term passive investing in a very inexpensive way. Well, another tool that we use is Zexrank. Besides the factor analyzer, we also use many other analysis tools, and we use them mainly to select individual stocks that outperform the general return. Also check our website, we have dividend value and good stocks and they all score relatively high in general return. So we are doing very well at the moment and that has been demonstrable for about three years in a row. Since we started, and then we do a lot of research combined with tools to potentially select the best winners. You also see that Sexshank gives, he has also done research of course, and he indicates that ETF risk is relatively low, but we have already established that. Now you might think, okay, nice. How does an ETF benefit me as a passive beginner investor who just buys every month? Well, if you look at 2024, the stock is already at 17%, and in 2025 or 2026, it can also achieve good returns. However, realistically, you should always look at the very long term. And over the very long term, this fund could achieve an average return of around 6 to 7% per year. And I am talking about a time horizon of 20 to 30 years. And then the 6 to 7% is, I think, realistic. At times, it can be 10%. At other times, it can also be significantly lower. At the moment, the stock market's elevated. We've seen this before. Saw it before the dot-com crisis. And for other crises, we have seen this, such as the financial crisis. Here it was still at a price of 50. It has actually halved the fund, so the fund has decreased by 50% in less than a year. And also, if you simply invest in the Vanguard Total World Stock, which has a lot of diversification, 10,000 stocks, you see that such a fund can actually drop by about 50% quite easily during panic. Well, the last real significant drop was during the coronavirus crisis. And here you see a decline of approximately 30% in a period of two or three months. Also, when technology stocks were particularly overvalued and growth stocks in 2022, the fund decreased by 25%. And even today, the fund seems to be very high again compared to the historical relative valuation of the stock market over the past 100 years. But well, that is advanced knowledge. Therefore, also follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have more than 10 years of investment experience. We also invest ourselves with quite a significant amount of capital. We are financially free. We help other people achieve financial freedom in an affordable way. And we know what we are doing, which gives us more context because in our videos, we share relatively a lot of information and we actually ask nothing for it. 
Now, that Vanguard Total World stock has risen a lot as a beginner investor, and what you can actually do to keep it simple is to buy every month. So if you buy every month, you buy when the stock market goes up and when the stock market goes down. And this way, you actually capture all the declines and increases. What you can also do is wait. However, waiting can also lead to procrastination. And as a result, you can actually lose returns. So actually, from our experience, the most pragmatic way is to just start with a small monthly amount. And if you see that the market has dropped by 20%, for example, that is actually a lot. So with every 10% decline, you would basically want to invest more and more. And you also need to be especially patient. This timeline here is from 2018 to, let's say, 2022. So four years later, and actually from that level, four years later, the total return is minus 1.3%. So in four years time, you have a minus 1.3% return. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the reality of the stock market. You need to take advantage of those market fluctuations. Looking at it on a daily basis will drive you completely crazy. You shouldn't want that either. You want to invest safely. If you choose this fund, just check every month and buy more. And if you see that the fund has dropped by 15%, then that's nice. And you just buy some extra every time it drops by 10%. You just buy extra. And if you see that the fund has dropped in total, for example, by minus 50% or even by minus 30%, or even if there is a big crash with minus 40%, yes, those are the moments when you want to invest a lot of money, but only invest money that you can miss in the very long term because what you don't want to do is sell in panic and take a loss while all you need to do is keep buying more when the market is low, and if there is economic growth in the very long term, then you will achieve returns. And instead of achieving a return of 6 or 7%, through this simple tactic, you can achieve a slightly higher return of around 10%. Or if you're lucky in good years, even in a relatively short time, you can achieve a return of 20% per year. However, it's easier said than done, as we know from experience. So keep your cool, and remember, Vanguard through the Wolfstack is an ETF for beginners. Very passive investing is the right methodology here. Low costs, an expense ratio of 0.07%, and a lot of diversification in more than 10,000 stocks. Don't worry. Invest for the long term and don't look back. Just keep going. If you are a more advanced ETF investor, you may optionally consider taking a position in a small cap ETF as a complement to the Vanguard Total Wealth Stock ETF. A very well known one is the ICS Russell 2000 ETF. This focuses on 2000 relatively small cap stocks or small companies. What is the difference? In the Vanguard Otto Wool stock, we discussed this extensively in the analysis. It contains more than 10,000 stocks, so you are simply tracking the entire stock market. But you also see that it is a blended investment style, primarily with large stocks. And the median market cap is 93 billion, and you actually miss relatively smaller companies. So if you want additional risk diversification, also over smaller companies, then you end up with the Russell 2000 ETF. However, my personal preference leans towards a different type of ETF for small caps, namely the World Small Cap ETF. What is the difference? The Russell 2000 is focused purely and solely on America, on United States stocks, which can work out well. However, the World Small Cap ETF provides broader diversification across relatively small companies, which may be more attractive for a beginner investor. And don't forget to look outside of America. Although the US market is great for stock investors, and I personally have a lot in the United States, you sometimes want to diversify in Europe or Asia. Why? Because valuations can sometimes be cheaper than in America, which gives you a relatively lower risk for a potentially higher return. And the World Small Cap ETF is an addition. Why? The Wang Vanguard Total World Stock ETFs are primarily focused on larger companies, large cap stocks. And from time to time, large cap stocks are relatively more expensively valued with a higher price to earnings ratio than small cap stocks. The advanced strategy is to occasionally mean that if you want to sell a position in large cap ETFs and reallocate it into small cap ETFs, this is an advanced strategy. Again, we explain this in our course. The World Small Cap ETF is just one example of ICS, and you can find the ticker that is available on your investment account. And the total expense ratio is indeed a bit higher, at 0.35%, but not excessively high.
Some characteristics of this portfolio are that the number of positions is around 3,000. So that is also more than the Russell 2000. More is not always better, but here there are more positions because it also has more geographical diversification. And you also see that the PE ratio is lower at 16, and that is not excessively high, but historically not cheap either. And it is significantly lower than the PE of 21 for large cap stocks. So that has to do with the rotation I mentioned earlier. By simply reallocating and rebalancing your ETF portfolio, you can lower the PI ratio of your portfolio, in this case your ETF portfolio, which reduces your risk while still potentially achieving higher returns purely and solely due to the valuations you are working with. Well, there are a lot of positions in it and they are all small cap stocks from Toll Brothers in real estate and such, and in caravans, those kinds of companies. You can also see the geographical and sector diversification on, in this case, the BlackRock website or other issuers of world small cap ETFs. Geographically, you see that 60% is in America, but there is also a portion in Japan, the United States, Canada, and so on, just not really in the emerging markets. So that is another option to choose an ETF that is predominantly in the emerging markets to also have geographical diversification in underdeveloped countries. The question is always whether that will pay off in the long term. Overall, America is the best market to invest in regarding stocks. However, from time to time, that valuation rises significantly, and we need to be cautious about that. Go to our website businessinvestors.info. You can find our own track record of money invested and our performance. And then go to free investing tools where you can download a lot of free investing tools. For example, stock portfolio tools, stock calculators for intrinsic valuation, and also free investing ebooks, ETF investing guide, stock investing guide, and more coming soon. TV Gelderland 2021. If you want to invest in the potentially best ETFs, everything depends on your risk profile. We talked about low-risk ETFs such as the Vanguard Total World Stock or the ICRS World Small Cap ETFs. Moving to a neutral risk profile, and we can see that here on the screen, we naturally arrive at the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which is still one of the best ETFs. And the S&P 500 ETF with the ticker VOOVOO is also the cheapest ETF you can find. There are many tickers depending on where you invest. So just take a look at which tickers available in your investment account have the lowest expense ratio. Because in terms of portfolio composition, there are no differences. After all, it is the S&P 500, so they all contain the same stocks. Of course, there are 500 stocks in it. You can also see that they are predominantly all large cap stocks that are in the S&P 500. And there are some issues at the moment, specifically with the S&P 500 due to the sky high valuation. You can also see that the return on equity is somewhat higher. These are, of course, terms for advanced investors, but you need to learn this if you are going to invest in ETFs because you can achieve relatively high returns simply by waiting for valuations to improve a bit and then buying more. Now, when you talk about what kind of companies are in this, and of course the geographic diversification is important, you also see that 31% is in information technology, and the largest companies are of course Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. And this is also why the S&P 500 is such a strong ETF and is considered the strongest index fund in the world today. That is, of course, due to the phenomenal results of these large companies that obviously have sales, not only in America, but also worldwide. But still, the geographical distribution remains very limited, as all stocks are, of course, listed in the United States. And the majority of the income that those companies earn also comes from the USA. So that is geographical risk, and you always have to take that into account. A number of interesting traits, the S&P 500 is one of the best ETFs. It is one of the cheaper ETFs, as it is so well known. The second is momentum. The five-year return was simply 100%. So you doubled your money in five years, and that is a higher return than 10% per year. A nice trick, you have the rule of 72. If you divide 72 by, for example, 7, then you have an annual return of 10%. If you divide 72 by 5, it means you have an annual return of about 12.5%. So the S&P 500 has achieved a return of 12.5% over the past five years, which is significantly higher than the median of all ETFs. So the S&P 500 performs very well in that regard. It also has lower costs with an expense ratio of 0.0%, significantly lower than the median of all ETFs. When we look at the dividend grade, yes, it is not a dividend ETF, so that is actually not very special. Lee. Then we have the risk grade. You can also see that the standard deviation is in line with the Vanguard Total World Stock. So yes, it actually has the same kind of volatility as the Vanguard Total World Stock. 
However, there are fewer stocks in it. Still, it is a bit of a risk. Why? An average annual return of the cash S&P 500 is 10% and that is also based on 100 years. But the stock market over 100 years is of course very long. Your time horizon can be much shorter. If it is very short, then you have a problem because right now the valuation is very high and a correction could easily be 20, minus 30, minus 40%. If it is a crash, it could even be a bit more. But in the very long term, the return of the S&P 500 is potentially attractive. However, be aware, there is a handy website called multiple.com S&P 500 PI ratio where you can view the S&P 500 PI ratio in relation to the entire stock market. Well, nowadays past 2020, we have of course a very different kind of composition of the S&P 500 with many more technology stocks. We saw that 30% is in technology stocks. These are, in terms of earning models, much better, stronger companies with much more profitability. So a slightly higher price to earnings of 30, or according to the source of the S&P 500, it is 26 or 27 the PE, a slightly higher PE. Ratio is justified. But historically speaking, the median is 15, and the average is 16. And if the valuation is significantly higher than above 20, then it becomes a bit concerning. So, it is quite possible that the phenomenal S&P 500 ETF will decline in the short term. As a passive investor, you can simply deal with that by starting now with a very small amount. And to keep buying more as the funds decline, only no one knows when that will happen, or if they will decline at all, and how long that will take. Historically, during the corona crisis, the decline was a rapid 30%. But if you zoom out further in this case, it only goes back to 2011, which is unfortunate because then we look at, for example, 2008 or the dot-com crisis, then you see huge increases in price to earnings ratios and then the declines. The market simply experiences large fluctuations. So an annual average return of 10% for the S&P 500 is possible, but it depends on when you enter and how much you buy during those large declines. That is also the simple tip. If the S&P 500 declines significantly by 20, 30 or 40 percent, just buy a lot more and hope that in the long term America will have economic growth. The Invesco QQQ ETF is one of the very best ETFs for the long term that you can buy if you mainly want to aim for higher returns. However, there are significant and important caveats regarding the Invesco QQQ ETF that we will discuss in this analysis. First, a few standard statistics. The total expense ratio is relatively cheap at 0.2%. So, by the way, one of the largest ETFs with 300 billion in market value in this fund. So, the issuer Invesco makes a lot of money from this ETF, but it has also achieved high returns for its clients in recent years. For example, the 10-year return is really quite high for an index fund. It's not really an index, but it is an ETF with 100 holdings, specifically in technology and innovation and annual returns. This year it was 38%. However, we will see in the coming period that the QQQ ETF will not achieve such high returns. Over the past 10 years, this was a plus of 400% return. Just to compare in perspective, the S&P 500 has achieved a 220% return in the same period. And the Vanguard Total World Stock, also one of the best long-term ETFs and also cheap for passive investors, achieved only 100%. So with this ETF, you would have doubled your investment in 10 years. With the S&P 500 ETF, you would have tripled your investment. And I must say, tripled, of course. And the Invesco QQQ would have multiplied your wealth by 5 in 10 years. So that is demonstrably and significantly better returns, and really much more return than, yes, maybe 95% of all investment funds and all value investors that exist. And all that with simply passive investing in an ETF that tracks hundreds of the largest, most important, innovative companies in the world. However, the largest companies are almost all from the USA, so there is geographical risk. However, the problem with Invesco QQQ is not so much geographical risk, but mainly the risk of volatility and valuations. Even today, the valuation for QQQ is again very high. More on that shortly. The holdings, you see it, the largest holdings of which the top 10 accounts for 51% of the total weighting. So that also means concentration risk in this case. This means, for example, that if Apple were to have, for whatever reason, then with 8% of the total weighting, it would naturally have a large impact on this ETF. Fortunately, there is sufficient diversification in other large companies like NVIDIA, 
Microsoft, Meta Platforms, Tesla, Alphabet, and it is actually just a very simple way for a beginner investor to invest in the best companies in the world, but in a diversified manner. You can easily apply this with buy the dip to increase your returns by lowering your average purchase price in the long term should you have a poor entry point. 60% of all those stocks come from the technology sector in a formal sense, but other sectors are also represented in this ETF. And there are a number of interesting characteristics. The annual return is simply very high compared to other ETFs. For example, the five-year return is 150%, while that of the S&P 500 was 100%. So the five-year return is significantly higher as well. And this year was also quite a good year with a 30% return in just one year. However, the valuations have risen very high. More on that later. The expense ratio of 0.2% is relatively low, especially compared to the median. Other characteristics, such as dividends. Well, the ETF scores high on dividend growth, but it is not a dividend ETF, of course. So the dividend yield is very low. And if you are looking for dividend income, you are better off choosing a dividend ETF or what we prefer, putting together your own dividend portfolio. Then you can choose companies that consistently pay high dividends and can also provide price potential. The risk of QQQ is somewhat on the higher side. But what is risk? The risk is, of course, permanent loss of money. And from that perspective, it is not too bad for the very long term. However, for the short term, or perhaps even in the next five years, there is indeed a risk that QQQ has too high a fundamental valuation. But that is not included in what we see here. What we see here is the standard deviation, in other words, standard fluctuations, and also the annual volatility. And you can see that the annual volatility is somewhat higher than most ETFs. For example, the S&P 500 has an annual volatility of 12%, while the QQQ has 17%, which means it rises and falls with more fluctuations. And we will see that shortly in a closer look at the price chart. We also see that the turnover ratio is 22%, which means that 22% of the shares are switched every year. That is indeed somewhat on the higher side. Finally, the liquidity is very high, one of the largest funds in the world. The daily trading volume is 30 million. So even with larger portfolios, you can sell your portfolio or all your positions in QQQ in one day if you want. If you have a lot of money, then it becomes an issue. The QQQ has risen a lot. In 2021, growth stocks were overvalued, strongly overvalued. And as always, over the past 100 years, when market valuations rise too high, a correction occurs. In this case, it was minus 33%, quite significant. And you can also see that since then, the QQQ ETF has increased by 85%. From time to time, you can profit extremely from this higher volatility. Volatility is another word for price fluctuations. What matters, of course, is that the fund rises in the long term. Well, you see the fund has risen in the long term, but nowadays, here at this peak, at the end of 2024, the valuation is indeed very high. These are great companies, Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, but the PE ratio is typically above 30. And it seems that no account is taken of what if the next few years turn out to be disappointing economically. Yes, then you get a situation like the dot-com crisis, but the dot-com crisis was a very different kind of situation. Here you had companies like Yahoo. Yes, the valuations were sky high and those companies barely made a profit. So the situation was more extreme, and after the dot-com crisis, stocks also fell by 80, 90%, extremely much. You also see that for years, the ETF actually generated no returns. From 2002 to about, let's say 2010, the return was actually negligible and even limited. And that situation occurs when the economic climate is interesting for a long time, favorable for investing a lot of money. Well, in the past, since actually 2015, 2016, inflation has been relatively low or even decreased, and interest rates have continuously fallen. Of course, with a low point around 2018, 2020, and interest rates are still relatively low, but have increased. And what happens? The debt cycle, or monetary policy, has been relatively very smooth over the past period. So a lot of money is being printed, money is easily borrowed, and it all comes back into the market, causing valuations to rise, rise, and continue to rise, simply because there is enough money, and it may well be that Invesco will decline for a very long term.
or even remain horizontal, but no one knows for sure. So that's always a thing with investing in thematic ETFs, in this case Invesco QQQ. When valuations rise very sharply, as in this case for the QQQ, you need to be careful with that. Where do you see all that? You can download the fact sheet, which you can simply open and view data in. And often you also first see just the summary of the standard situations. You also see that the return on equity is relatively high at 42%. However, you see that the price to earnings ratio is 37. 37, historically, is quite high. It is partly compensated by the great company with the high return on equity. However, it may very well be that the economy does not decline as quickly in the next five years. Rises, and if the economy does not rise quickly, then that means higher valuations will be punished with a correction. So that is the question at the moment. We can't say much yet, time will tell. And one thing we know for sure, look at the long term. And in the long term, QQQ is one of the better ETFs. So the best way to start, and the best is in parentheses because that uh, obviously depends on how much money you have. But let's say you are just looking at the market and you have relatively little money and you want to achieve potentially high returns, then the QQ ETF could simply be one of the better ways for passive investing in fast growing companies. And what you can do, since you have relatively little money, is just start with a monthly contribution and buy when the price drops, buy when the price rises. But when the price drops significantly, and for example, a 30% drop occurs quite often for these types of ETFs, then buy a lot when it has dropped by say 20 or 30% and keep buying more during the decline, what you should not do is sell in a panic. You should actually buy more. It's actually that simple. And even if this is the highest level ever for the next five years, the price will decline for a long time. Then buy more so your average purchase price becomes relatively cheaper. And what you should do then is hope that the economy will grow in the long term, but that is something that is beyond your control. What is within your control is to buy when prices drop that increases the chance of success. If you have a lot of money, more money, then you can be a bit more cautious. Maybe start with a small weekly investment or just wait completely. And if the price drops significantly, then you can invest a lot of money. This is also called a lump sum where you invest everything at once. And I simply don't think that by the end of 2024, this is the right time given the high valuations to invest all your money now in a higher risk ETF like the Invesco QQQ. What I would personally do in that case is look at ETFs or individual stocks with relatively lower valuations that are undervalued. So lower valuation, potentially higher dividend, and also a lower potential downside risk. In other words, applying value, buying undervalued stocks. Overall, Invesco QQQ does seem a bit overvalued at the moment. Go to our website businessinvestors.info. You can find our own track record of money invested and our performance. And then go to free investing tools where you can download a lot of free investing tools. For example, stock portfolio tools, stock calculators for intrinsic valuation, also free investing ebooks, ETF investing guide, stock investing guide, and more coming soon. Finally, a potential best ETF for the long term if you have a somewhat lower risk profile and also appreciate dividends. Then we are talking about the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF with the ticker SCHD. A relatively cheap ETF as well, so that's important. A cheap ETF. And what's interesting about this ETF is that it pays out a relatively higher dividend. So this is actually perhaps the best for dividend investors. It invests in about 100 different companies, all of which are strong dividend stocks. So companies with strong positions that also pay high dividends and grow their dividends. This fund performs quite well consistently over the long term and the dividend yield is between 3 to 4%. That varies a bit from time to time. You also see that the portfolio turnover is 28%. That means that approximately every single year about a third of the portfolio is refreshed and rebalanced. And the total holdings of 100 is certainly not a static concept. They continue to actively invest in the potentially best dividend companies. And if you also look at the number of holdings or the different types of holdings, you see very different kinds of companies than in the Invesco QQQ or in the yes part is of course also in the S&P 500. However, there is an SCHD, so the swap dividend ETF, which focuses only on 100 companies. And here you see examples like BlackRock, Cisco Systems or Bristol Myers, which is interesting because it has fallen a lot and is now rising again. Altria, for example, pays a high dividend. So these are very different kinds of companies. 
So actually, if you invest in the QQQ, which is focused on high-risk technology and innovation, you actually have a very strong risk diversification if you complement that with. And that is also the reason why I make these videos. This is a completely different type of ETF, so also for a different type of investor, ultimately. What you want, of course, is just a high net return and the volatility of this. ETF is also somewhat lower. At the moment, the price has risen a bit. However, the overall valuation is not extremely high. The price to earnings ratio is 18. We have already seen in the video that the S&P 500 ETF is around 26. The QQQ ETF price to earnings ratio is 37. So a price to earnings ratio of 18 seems quite acceptable. The historical price to earnings ratio of the entire stock market is 15. So compared to that benchmark, it is slightly above, but not much higher. And the return on equity is still quite attractively high. So actually, this stock can still be a good investment, both now, today, and for the long term. Price declines can occur, of course, like during a coronavirus crisis, but we see that with all ETFs. However, while the QQQ, for example, has fallen by about 30% from 2021 to seat 2023, the SCHD has only decreased by 16% at its lowest point. So the annual volatility is lower, also lower than the S&P 500. So you could say that this ETF, O, performs more stably. And so for people who are looking for a bit of capital preservation, do not want to take too much risk, or I should actually say volatility, so do not want to experience wild fluctuations, then it is a very interesting ETF. And I think one of the best dividend ETFs, and I have no interest in promoting Vanguard Swap or iShares, they are simply the most popular ETFs that are rightly popular because they are simply the best. So that is a very important point. It 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 is a very important point of the ARCF ETF, which has risen by about 83% after the last dip. So quite high. ETFs rose 83% since last launch. Some ETFs make repeated rises or falls less interesting. Sell moments are crucial to prevent losses. We publish weekly buy-sell signals and a monthly ETF screener update from Seeking Alpha and others. And they use the quant rating or quantitative data to compare all the ETFs in the dataset with each other. Based on momentum, costs, dividends, risk and liquidity. And because momentum is an important factor in this data tool, certain ETFs score very high on this rating and could theoretically achieve a higher return in the short term due to momentum. One of the ETFs we selected for this year was the Argentina ETF, and it currently scores high on the factor under this, but it was also relatively cheap in terms of valuation. That is a relatively low price to earnings and price to book ratio, a strong upward momentum, also interesting macroeconomic developments. So from our monthly update for the best ETFs, we selected the Argentina ETF, and there are other examples, but we are precise and careful in which ETFs we select to recommend as a buy for potentially higher returns. So thank you for watching about the potentially best ETFs for the long term. The very best ETFs on an annual basis, that is short term, is very much dependent on momentum, risk, and also valuation. In this video, we have exclusively looked at potential ETFs for the longer term, also for passive investors and with lower risk. So we talked about the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. We talked about the World Small Cap ETF, the S&P 500 ETF. We talked about the QQQ and we talked about the Schwab Dividend ETF. Five of the best ETFs for beginner and passive investors for the long term, such as. But we have seen that the stock market goes up and down, sometimes very quickly up and sometimes also very quickly down. When everything has risen a lot, there is sometimes a chance that such an ETF will drop significantly. Speaking of risk, I personally find the Wisdom Cloud Computing ETF, ticker WCLD, very interesting as well. Yes, it can drop by as much as 60%, but it can also rise significantly at the right moment with high returns. So buy the dip, hold for the long term, and sell when the whole market is euphoric and valuations have skyrocketed. Thank you for watching and let me know what your questions are.